The Brain Channel is proud to present their first ever live broadcast. The following special contains harsh language and graphic images. Viewer discretion is advised. So, this is all for my benefit, huh? Wow, that's, that's really big of you guys. You, you're really worried about me. That's what they told me. They said, Curtis, we, we don't want you to, to go on to that next step, to go to that next level without the opportunity to absolve yourself, without the opportunity to, to purge yourself of your demons. <laughs> and this was the plan. We'll put you in a nice dark room. You know, no distractions at all. Just, just a couple of cameras to record what you have to say because we know you don't like talking to people. Because, well, <laughs> I'm not really a people person, you know. Multiple murderers generally aren't, like, sociable guys. So, so since you don't like to talk to people, we'll, we'll put you just with those cameras. And, and you'll know that your message can get out there someday. And you can say what you need to say. You can, you can break down. You can cry like a little girl if you need to. You can let it all go, Curtis. And, and you can meet your maker with a clean conscience. And won't that be great? <laughs> you guys, you guys think I'm really fucking retarded, don't you? <laughs> this isn't for me. You don't give two shits about me. I mean, I, why should you? But why pretend? Why should you care about me? This is for you. You guys want to know. You want to know what goes on in a mind like mine. You want to know how a mind works that can just kill people, take another person's life, and have absolutely no remorse. I never apologize because I've never been sorry. And you want to know how that can be. And you also want to know what goes on in the mind of someone who is, who's facing his own demise the next day. How do you cope? What do you think? Do you reach a state of dementia? What goes on? That's what you want to know. Look you silly bastards. You didn't have to go through all this, this big rigmarole. You didn't have to do this big production. You want to know? I'll tell you. I'll tell you everything you want to know. Maybe it'll be fun to hear. Maybe it won't be so much fun to hear. Maybe you won't be able to get what I say out of your subconscious at night when you go to sleep. Who knows? But I'll be glad to tell you. Good evening. I'm Dr. Garrison Hirsch the nation's foremost and off-reference psychologist, and I'll be your host for tonight's presentation, One Last Kill. To my left is Dr. Kerry Robbins, psychoanalyst and author of the bestseller, What Made Me Say That? And to my right is Dr. Ross Miller, researcher in criminal psychology and personal therapist to tonight's case study. Thank you both for joining us here tonight. Good evening. Dr. Miller, why don't you bring us up to speed as why we're here in this old, unused safe room of a maximum security prison. Thank you, Dr. Hirsch. The man you just saw in the video clip is Curtis Starks, a convicted multiple murderer whose life was scheduled to end just moments ago in the gas chamber just yards from where we're sitting right now. As Curtis stated in the clip, I believe that making this video was a way of allowing him to cleanse himself before he moved to his next reality. Dr. Miller, was Curtis receptive to the idea of making this tape? No, no he wasn't, not at first. But then suddenly, he not only agreed to the taping, he actually seemed quite enthused about it. It seems hard to believe that anyone in his situation could be enthused about anything. Well, I would agree, but Curtis wasn't your average run-of-the-mill murderer. He possessed a genius-level IQ. He, he was incredibly sharp-witted. In fact, I was concerned that he had an ulterior motive for agreeing to the taping, which, in the end, turned out to be the case. Yes, it did. Now, on portions of this video, Curtis Starks would launch into manic, rambling diatribes that really don't make any sense. So we've edited those portions out tonight. And at this point, let's go back to that tape. So you want to know where I came from? Yeah, I always liked to fight. As a little kid, I liked to fight. 
and it never really got too carried away. But as I got older, I liked it more and more. And and you know what the real the real turning point was? I got in lots of fights and I won most of them. But I'm not the toughest guy on the planet, so I didn't win them all. The first time I really got my ass kicked, got the shit beat right out of me. I liked it. That's when I knew there was something wrong with me. And that's when everything took on a whole new, new dimension for me because at that point, it didn't matter anymore. There was no fear. I didn't have to be afraid of violence because I didn't care if the violence was turned on me. It was still the same great rush. And that's when I started to know I had a problem. Oh, and, and let, let me explain something to you real quick, just in case you're wondering. Watching Bugs Bunny had nothing to fucking do with it, retards. I, f oh my God, I fucking hate that when you guys come up with that shit. Everything, everything has to have a reason. There's got, there, there's got to be an excuse for a poor soul like me. How did I turn out like I did? It's got to be the violence on TV. There's too much violence on TV and in the movies. That's why he turned out bad. He's, he saw the Roadrunner push an anvil onto the coyote's head. Of course he wants to kill. What are you, you're fucking retarded. You're so stupid. Do you know why I'm like I am? Because I'm fucked up. That's why. Because I am fucked in the head. And I don't have the same shit inside me that other people seem to have. It doesn't bother me to strangle somebody. It doesn't bother me to take the life away from somebody else if I think they needed it. It doesn't bother me. It's not there. You can't rehabilitate me. You can't put it into me. It doesn't exist. I'm fucked up. I take the responsibility for that. Quit trying to give away all personal responsibility. Nobody's responsible for their actions. Nobody does things just because they're fucked up. There's got to be a reason for it. Well, there ain't no reason for it. There's no fucking reason for it, except that I ain't right, and that I liked it, and that certain people through time have provoked me to the point where I had to take their life, and I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't have done it to them if I didn't want to, so why the fuck should I be sorry? I mean, let me, let me think, I'm no history major, but I seem to recall things like a Spanish Inquisition and Romans feeding Christians to lions. And as far as I know, they didn't have fucking Bugs Bunny back then. So there you go, you stupid bastards. That's why sometimes people commit horrible, heinous acts on one another. Because sometimes people are pretty fucked up. And because sometimes, all the time, people have a dark side and sometimes the dark side comes out. All right, any thoughts or theories on what we just saw there? Well, nothing there really surprised me. Although it was often difficult to get Curtis to open up in our sessions together, one thing was very clear. He always hated people's lack of personal responsibility for their actions, and he always prided himself on taking the medicine for his own indiscretions. No, I'll have to disagree with you there, Ross. I think he's just putting on bravado and giving the old I'll take the high road speech. How do you arrive at that conclusion, Doctor? He has nothing else to lose. He's a dead man. In reality, he'd be blaming TV, his mother, the Easter Bunny, anything he could to get out of taking his medicine. Instead, he just starts throwing stones at the rest who are just trying to scramble and save their own necks. All in all, just like any other murderer, he's just a coward. Oh, I don't know, Garrison. Uh, believe it or not, for a man who committed so many heinous acts, Curtis was actually very principled in other aspects of his life. No, Curtis was an actor, and you got suckered in. Well, I personally find his we-all-have-a-dark-side rhetoric tired, ridiculous, and just an excuse to justify his own behaviors. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Carrie, please go on. Well, his stance that all people are capable of committing an unspeakable act, it's just the warped mind's way to excuse his actions. Uh, are you saying that we're all not capable of committing murder in an extreme situation, Dr. Robbins? That's exactly what I'm saying. I personally can never take the life of another human being. Well, what if it was to save a loved one, a, a member of your family, perhaps? Every time this discussion is engaged, someone will bring up that scenario. Right. And in real life, people aren't faced with a choice. Um, disease, automobile accidents, murderers, they don't allow for a choice. So this whole question is pretty silly. Well, I don't mean to be argumentative here. It's just that stating that you could never be moved to a rage so intense w without ever having been put in that situation, it, it's posturing in the same manner that Curtis was just accused of. And how do you figure that? Well, because we never truly know what's inside of us until the situation becomes real enough and intense enough to put it to the test. 
excuse me, Dr. Miller, but I do know I could never take the life of another human being. I may have been called a lot of things, but I will not be called a murderer. All right. At this point, let's go back to this increasingly twisted video. So, yeah, my problem got worse and worse as I got older. And you all know, because I'm sure you're sitting there with all my files out in front of you reading my history, so <clears throat> you know where it really took a turn for the bad. But I'll tell you. You want to hear the story from my perspective? I'll tell you. I was a junior in college. Psychology major. <laughs> That's kind of ironic, isn't it? Psychology major in a psych class. And I'm sitting there in class one day, and this particular psych professor, he was a, he was a piece of shit. He was an arrogant bastard, and, and he really, really thought highly of himself. So one day he asked me a question, and, and I, I don't remember the exact question, but I do remember that it wasn't even a yes or no answer. It wasn't a matter of fact. It was a matter of opinion. And so he asked me the question, and I gave him my opinion. Well, apparently it wasn't good enough for him because he called me stupid. He called me stupid in a really witty, imaginative way that made everyone laugh. And then he said to me, and when we want the trailer park perspective. I'll come back to you, Curtis. I never lived in a fucking trailer park. And even if I had, I just didn't like him. And he had no right to talk to me like that in front of a bunch of people, in front of my peers. So I got up and I started to walk. And everybody assumed that I was walking out. And you know what the funny thing was? As I was walking, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. He had a chance. He still had a chance at that point. I might have just walked out. Except as I was walking towards the front of the class, he said, sit down, Elmer. <laughs> and Elmer, that was so witty, you know, because he was, he was pretending that I was, you know, like backwoodsy or <laughs> kind of redneckish, trailer parkish. That was pretty funny. Made all the kids laugh. <laughs> so I walked right up to him. And I smacked him in the face as hard as I could. I felt his cheekbone disintegrate when I punched him, and he went down like a pile of shit. And then when he was down, I started thinking, I, I gotta act fast because these other idiots are gonna come pull me off. And so I, I looked around and I found a pen on his desk and I stuffed it in his fucking eye. And the blood and the eye juice came squirting out and everything, and he was screaming and holding. And I was like, there, motherfucker. Fuck you. He had no right to talk to me that way. And they yanked me off, and he was lucky they did, because I wasn't done. I was st just starting to get into it. And they pulled me off, and, and needless to say, that kind of ended my college career. I wasn't really welcome on campus anymore. Had to go to... That was the first time I ever had to go to psychiatric counseling. And I remember, <laughs> while, they, while I was on trial and the counseling was going on, I remember... The psychiatrist was the first one that was trying to get down to the demons that were inside me and, and to understand why I was the way I was. <laughs> and I remember telling him one day, I said, Hey, Doc, because I was pretty much bored with seeing him. I said, Hey, Doc, you, you suppose I might be able to turn a profit on this thing? <laughs> and he said, What do you mean? I said, Well, we could do a commercial or something. And he didn't know what I was talking about. So I said, Yeah, we could do a commercial. You know, I'll take, it could be for like Bic or somebody like that. And I could take a pen and I could jam it in somebody's eye. And then I could yank it out, and then I could write with it. And I could show the people, you know, it would be like a, a takes a licking and keeps on ticking type thing. I think it would, it would be a real good advertising angle, don't you? And he was, he was a little put off. He didn't think that was the right thing to say. So anyway, they put me on trial, and I got seven months in jail. That's all I served. Seven months in jail. I stuck off fucking pen in a guy's eye and they put me in jail for seven months. You would think that maybe somewhere along the line, that psychiatrist, that judge, someone would say, hey, this dude's fucked up. No, I got seven months in jail and five years probation. Don't you do it again. You better stop sticking pens in people's eyes now, damn it. We're not going to be so nice the next time. So, he stuck a pen in someone's eye. Should we really expect this man to be rehabilitated? Certainly. That option always needs to be left open. I mean, even in this video, he is showing remorse. He does? Absolutely. The joke about takes a licking, keeps on ticking. That morbid humor is just a defense mechanism. Uh, I don't know, Carrie. No, this is actually interesting. Uh, go on. Well, he wants to carry this tough guy bravado to the end. 
the video was supposed to be a chance for him to cleanse his actions, and instead he used it just to excuse his own behaviors. Well, I disagree. I think Curtis's lack of remorse is genuine. It, in this and every other case he describes, he feels perfectly justified in his actions because he was provoked. No, I, I have to say, I, I think you really have been fooled by him. Well, maybe, but more likely I just know him better than the both of you. Ross, please tell us that you're just taking the opposite side to make this interesting for television. Don't tell us that you're buying into a supposed bravado and his intellect. You're underestimating him, Garrison. No, I've overestimated you. Now let's go back to this tape. And I made it almost, was it almost two years before there was another major incident. I didn't go looking for trouble, but sometimes things set me off. And I remember the very next incident. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was driving. I guess I, I'm like the poster boy for road rage. Because this asshole, this incredible moron, cuts me off at an intersection where I had the right of way. Happens. We all get pissed off about it. But as he does it and I blow the horn, he looks up in his rearview mirror and he gives me the finger. He cut me off and then he gives me the finger. That's unacceptable. Stupid motherfucker. You screwed up. I toot the horn to bring your attention to it and you're going to give me the finger? So I followed him. And he realized I was following because we picked up speed pretty good. Fortunately for me, he lived kind of out into the country a little bit. He pulled into his driveway and I pulled in right behind him. And again, he had a chance. He had a chance. He could have gotten out of his car. He could have said, hey, sorry, buddy, I got carried away. I shouldn't have flipped you the bird. He could have said, ah, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, you, 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 you tooted the horn. You made me mad. I flipped you the bird. Hey, I, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. He didn't. He gets out of his car and he looks at me and goes, what the fuck do you want? He cut me off. What the fuck do I want? I showed him exactly what the fuck I wanted. Right there in his own driveway, I choked that motherfucker to death. And I fucked with him while I did it. I had right hold of his throat. I put him down on the ground. I had my forearm in his throat. And I said, I just lost it. And I can't even honestly say I lost it because I was in control. I knew what I was doing. I knew what I was doing and I was liking it. And I had such a blind rage and I would choke him and I would feel him gurgling. And I would feel, feel that he couldn't get any air in. I could feel I was crushing his larynx and it gasped. And I let him go. I said, oh, maybe I'm going to let you live. And then he started begging for his life. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Well, he should have fucking thought of that a little sooner. He should have thought of that a little earlier. Put his fucking finger away. Or had a little common decency and said, hey, sorry, buddy. Sorry, I, I got a little carried away. Because the next thing I know, crushed his windpipe. Happens. That's a pretty, in case you were wondering, that's a pretty gruesome way to die because it, like, you hear that, that crack and then the, there's, there's just this gurgling of blood and the blood that comes out is so dark, deep red. It's just, it just didn't seem like a pleasant experience at all. And so needless to say, that was a, that was a violation of my probation. They, they didn't look kindly on that. So back to the old courtroom I went. I got a 15-year sentence in a loony bin in a mental hospital so they could rehabilitate me. Unfortunately, 15 years is a really long time. And I didn't make it. In the loony bin there, we, we had this goofy creepy little bastard that his name was Don I didn't much fucking like Don Don was a real annoying little guy and, and he had this this real crappy habit of, of giving people wedgies wedgies I mean how old were we all and we're all demented as it is and he's coming up and giving people wedgies so one day Don did it to me I said Don look I don't like you to begin with you're a creepy, goofy little bastard. If you ever, ever touch me again, I will fucking kill you. Well, apparently, Don was a slow learner. Either that, or all I can figure is a lot of people saw it and Don didn't want to get punked and seemed like he was afraid of me or something. So one day, we're in the halls, 
just a bunch of the other goofy retards around, nobody else. And he comes up and he grabbed hold of my underwear. And the second I felt his hand on my underwear, I spun around and I flung Don into the fucking wall. And I drove my knee into Don's nuts. And when Don fell onto the ground screaming and crying and making all kind of high-pitched little sounds, I jumped on him. I grabbed a hold of his neck and I slammed his fucking head against the concrete floor 22 times. I counted. They had it on tape. They made me watch it again. I guess it was like part of a therapy or something. All it did for me was it's like, wow, how many slams did I get in before they pulled me off? 22 fucking times I hit his head against the concrete floor. And let me tell you something. It was the most bizarre thing because I could actually hear the skull fragments rattling around in there. It was like a fucking Yahtzee game. And pretty soon, I was just shaking him. His, his neck was like a, a rag doll. There was just nothing at the top of his neck, and it just kept pounding against the floor over a wedgie. But I told him, I told him, I said, Don, don't fucking touch me again. And Don had to do it. So Don got his head turned into a Yahtzee cup. And again, I'm supposed to feel remorse. I'm supposed to feel sorry. Fuck him. Don't touch me. I told him not to touch me and he had to do it anyway. So he got what was coming to him. And I know I've been told over and over what well, killing someone isn't an appropriate response to them performing a little bit of an annoyance on you. Fuck you. I'll determine what my proper response is. You have your proper response. You say, Don, please don't do that to me anymore. That's very uncomfortable. And I bounce his head off the concrete floor 22 fucking times. We all got our way of dealing with things. Of course, that's why I am in here where I am today, but what the fuck? Fuck Don. Traffic disputes and wedgies. Annoying, but are they really the workings of an insane man? No, the act of a man in need of some help. Oh, a uh, hug maybe? <laughs> You're trying to be sarcastic. Uh, uh, a little. Uh, look, Carrie, as he pointed out, there's something missing from him. It, if that's the case, then there is no way to rehabilitate him. Are you really accepting a clinical diagnosis from a clearly deranged mind? Well, when that mind is the one in question, then yes. I believe his views need to be considered. Well, that's just great then. Why don't we all pull in our shingles and we'll let the patients take uh, care of themselves? No, I, I didn't say that. I'm just pointing out that Curtis was an exceptional case with a very sharp intellect and an otherwise rational mind. Maybe there really was something missing from him. Well, if we believe that, doesn't it wipe out the need for the clinical psychiatric field? I mean, if we're going to say that the mind can't be fixed, then basically we're all irrelevant here. Well, that's too broad, but I do believe that we don't have all the answers. Well, I do believe that we can have all the answers. It just takes the right therapist with the skill and experience to apply the proper first aid. Now, our case study wasn't done yet, not by a long shot. Yeah, that was my punishment for killing Don. Had to go to the state pen. Got life imprisonment, with the possibility of parole. I guess they still weren't completely convinced. <laughs> you know what else I've been asked a lot, especially over the last few months here? Do I believe in God? And tell me what I think about God? I know you're bracing for it. I believe in him. I absolutely believe in God. I believe that he is peace and love and, and everything that he's cut out to be. Surprise you, don't it? I also know that he's probably pretty well pissed off at me right now. I don't think I'm in his real good graces. I don't expect I should be. But I know he's up there and I know I'm going to be facing him real shortly. And I hope he'll have some mercy on me. But I don't know. But the funny thing is, the people who look down their nose at me, including you, wherever you are watching this video, because I killed. I killed people. That breaks a commandment. You all break commandments, you fucking hypocrites. You know what? Outside of the killing thing, I got it pretty much knocked. <laughs> I wasn't a bad guy except that I like to kill people sometimes. I'm going to hell because I killed. Well, maybe. But if the commandments... If the commandments are the final judgment, I don't think I'm going to be alone. And I think you're going to be surprised by some of the people sharing a hot little cubicle next to me. At least I own up for what I did.
and I'm going to own up for it again, and so are all of you. Have a nice day when that comes around. All right, all right. You want to? All right. Let's let's let's. Try. You want to know? You want to know everything, right? You want to know how I got to where I am? Because all all I had at this point was life in prison with the possibility of parole. It's like a game show. You in life in prison, but you do have the possibility of parole. Well, that only lasts so long, too. I'm sure you folks have heard stories about the horrible sexual things that go on in prison. Well, they're they're not too too exaggerated, actually. And I'd been in prison. I'd been in a state pen for quite a little while before two guys decided that I was pretty cute. And I informed those two guys that didn't matter how cute I was, I wasn't going to wear a skirt for them. We had this kind of standoff for a few months on end. Then one night they decided they were going to take advantage of the situation. And they did. There were two of them. They were pretty tough cocksuckers. And they did what they wanted to do. And now... I took it. I didn't cry like a little guy. I wasn't no Ned Beatty. Remember Deliverance? <laughs> After I got butt fucked myself, I, I lost all respect for Ned Beatty. Crying like a little girl. Hey, you take it. It happens. It sucked. I didn't particularly like the idea of having another guy sticking his shank in my rectum. But hey, what are you going to do? Sometimes life, you know, pisses on you a little bit. So what the fuck? But those motherfuckers, boy, I wasn't happy. <laughs> I wasn't even a little bit fucking happy. And it took me all of two days before I... They weren't even smart about it. They thought they were just going to walk on about their everyday lives after it. <laughs> it took me two whole days <laughs> to catch up with the first one of those motherfuckers. And I slammed his head. We had, we had this really heavy door. And you'd be surprised how many things in prison can be used as a weapon, even though they try to make it weapon-proof. We had this really heavy door on one of the equipment lockers. And we were getting out some equipment. Guards on each side of me. It took me all two seconds to grab hold of that motherfucker, put his head in that door, and slam it shut. Crushed his fucking head like a grape. As much as I enjoyed it, even that one was a little gruesome, because there wasn't an orifice on his body that wasn't spitting blood after that. That was one heavy fucking door, let me tell you. His head was this misshapen blob, and it actually looked like it had just forced everything to explode. Stupid motherfucker, now I'm supposed to feel remorse about that one, right? Stupid fucking son of a bitch. You come to me, you take something from me, motherfucker, I'll take something from you. I'll take everything you got in one fell swoop. And they punish me, and they put me on trial again. Now I got life in prison without the possibility of parole. Well, fuck, you really got me now, motherfuckers. Yeah, that cured me. Funny thing, too, while they kept me in, in solitary away from everybody else, and while the trial was going on, they, they conveniently transferred the other motherfucker that decided to make me his girlfriend away. Guess they thought I was going to do something to him, too. <laughs> Guess they were right. Guess they were absolutely fucking right. I'm back in the general population. Me. Loving, caring guy that I have never apologized for any of this shit. And they put me back in general population. And I lasted another almost two years. Two years. And then, then this one was maybe the most bizarre one of all. We had this one prison guard. His name was Otto. <laughs> Stupid name, but good guy. Otto was a good guy. And not because he was a pussy like some of the prison guards were. Otto was genuinely a decent guy. He would talk to you. He would get to know you. I mean, he still did his job. You knew he was the boss. He, he, he balanced it better than anybody I'd ever seen. Otto was all right. Most all the cons liked him. So one day, this weaselly piece of shit, this Carlos, decided that he didn't like Otto for some reason. Or that he was just going to show off what a tough guy he was. And he threw his shit at him. He threw his own fucking feces in Otto's face. For nothing. For no reason whatsoever. What the fuck? I killed people, and I got more class than that. You, he fucking threw... He took... First of all, you take a shit, and then you pick it up. Just to pick it up yourself, you gotta be pretty much fucked up. And then throw it in the face of the one of the only decent guys in the joint. Fuck Carlos. 
So I heard about it, and that one was probably the most unexpected one of all, because Carlos, Carlos never saw that shit coming at all. Never saw it coming. And I killed Carlos, too. Yeah. This one, I, this one I wasn't as imaginative or creative about. I just pummeled him to death. I punched him in the face. I put him on the ground. I smacked his head off furniture. I threw him through shit. Anything I could find. I just had a field day with old fucking Carlos. And finally I grabbed hold of him and I choked him out. The whole thing took... It was all a blur. I don't know. Maybe it seemed like it took a while. But I don't think it took me much longer than 45 seconds to kill fucking Carlos. Good he's gone. Fuck him. And you know what the funny thing was? Finally. Finally, they put they they put you on trial. It doesn't matter if you're killing shit bags. They still put you on trial. And they finally gave me the death sentence. They finally fucking figured out that maybe I was too touched in the head to go on living. Duh! You stupid bastards, what took you so long? But the ironic thing was, the person I killed, who I feel I was most justified in killing is the one that finally got me the big DP, death penalty, baby. And so that's why I'm sitting here making this little tape for all of you to enjoy today. Because tomorrow, they give me that little touch of gas. <sighs> Breathe deep, motherfucker, you're gonna die. <laughs> hey, what can I say? I got it coming to me. What took you so long? A killer with faith. Is this at all unusual? No, not really. If Curtis had any fear, I believe the only one was of God. I agree with that. Many killers have professed their faith in God, as bizarre and contrary as that may sound. Well, I think he's just enjoying himself. He's playing it up to the cameras. He's very narcissistic. Well, he definitely has the ability to get his point across. Well, at this time, we do have a plethora of different avenues in which to take this case study. We'll take a look at the rest of the tape and then take the entire video as a whole. Now, for those of you watching, we should remind you that this next segment is very graphic and disturbing. And you know what one of the worst parts about facing the gas chamber tomorrow is? I mean, aside from the stuff that's, you know, pretty obvious, is those stupid fucking protesters that'll be out there. That never ceases to amaze me. They're going to be out there and they're going to be screaming and crying and wailing because, because the system is taking a life and they don't have the right to do it. And no one has the right to take someone else's life. What the fuck is wrong with you, you fucking idiots? Of course they do. I, shit, most of these guys, most of the guys in this place should be fucking dying. They should be putting them, most all of them to death. We are scum. We are never going to contribute anything. And you, you gotta do it. That's part of the system. I deserve it. A lot of the others deserve it, and they're not gonna get it. Hell, half of them are gonna go back out and walk the streets again. And you're gonna be out there crying and wailing. No, no, no. Just keep them in prison. Fuck, keep them in prison. Get rid of them. Society has to start getting rid of the dregs. You gotta get rid of the people like me. And you gotta do it in higher volume and quicker. Some of us just don't fit. I don't know how to make the. It's just never gonna be there. There is something missing from me. And you do not want me to be alive. And you do not want a lot of these other fucking assholes to be alive either. So sit out there and say your prayers and, and shed your tears. And just be glad that it's not somebody you know or love that I killed because maybe you wouldn't be out there crying then every time you see one of those stupid fucks out there blatting because one of us is dying it's like a slap in the face to everybody that knew and loved the people that he did kill you fucking retards <laughs> you know it's fucking bad when I gotta be the moral high ground <laughs> when I gotta explain to people the morality of an issue but the fuck out. Go the fuck home. Protect your children. Protect your elderly. Keep them away from people like me. Don't flip people off in traffic, especially if you're at fault. But don't fucking hang around the prison crying because I'm dying. Fuck. <laughs> you're doing it way too late. Fucking assholes. 
So that's how I got to be where I am today. The man you see before you right now, facing what I'm facing. Hell, I brought it on myself. And now I gotta, I gotta pay the price. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Oh, but I do have something special in store for you. It's the, the, the main reason I even agreed to do this. I had this planned all along. I'm gonna treat you to something really special before I go. I got one last kill left in me. <laughs> Let me show you. I smuggled this in here. <laughs> it's kind of little, huh? I mean, how much damage can you do with something like that, right? You'd be surprised. I've done a lot of damage with less. <laughs> Let's just hope. Do you think? Do you think it's gonna be sharp enough? Let's test it out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's sharp enough. Makes a nice little incision, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'm gonna let you see one last kill. Who's it gonna be? I gotta be sending somebody in here to take care of this camera equipment, right? They gotta be they gotta be somebody coming in here that I can take out, right? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna let you see. I'm gonna let you see. Ooh. I'm gonna let you see the one last kill. Enjoy it with me, won't you? One last kill. A lot redder than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh, you know what? Oh, God. I hope I don't get an infection. <laughs> I hope that plate was clean. <laughs> hey, Mom. I'm sorry, all right? It's the only thing I got to say. I'm sorry to you. <laughs> to the people I took? <laughs> Fuck you. Every one of you deserved it. You shouldn't have pissed me off in the first fucking place and it wouldn't happen to you. Fuck you! <laughs> one last kill. <laughs> oh. Hey, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna piss myself! <laughs> and you know why? <laughs> you know why I'm gonna piss myself? Not because I'm scared. Not because I'm so scared I can't control my bladder. Not because I know what's coming. I'm gonna piss myself because they're gonna make some stupid motherfucker clean it up! <laughs> I'm a piece of shit! I'm gonna be dead, I'll be a corpse, and I'll have piss all over me, and they're gonna make some silly bastard clean it up. Good career choice, motherfucker! Clean my piss! <laughs> oh man. Well, I guess. I guess I should. Uh, I guess I should. should leave you with one last, like. some final words. Something to remember me by, huh? This is my opportunity. Everybody's listening. S something for my legacy. <laughs> Fuck it. I... I... I want... I want... Well, as we just saw, Curtis got the very last and very disturbing laugh.
Well, certainly, because he cheated the system out of taking his life in a manner in which they decreed. Now, Curtis had a very unusual sense of humor. He loved irony. I'm sure it would have delighted them to no end that we supplied the venue that allowed him to, in his mind anyways, beat us. Now, what about his diatribe against the anti-death penalty protesters? Weren't they be considered allies of him? No, no. To, to Curtis, they were demonstrating weakness and unwillingness to hold people accountable for their actions. Even though he would be included in those who which were held accountable. Oh, especially because he was one of them. I do believe that Curtis was actually angry and felt cheated that there was that something missing from him. No, he was just being insincere. How so? As I said before, he's only doing this for the cameras. There's no real bravado. There's no real Holy intelligence. Shit. Oh shit! It's all right, Bucky. Relax, relax there. You're not dead yet. Ross, Dr. Miller, how the hell are you? Curtis, uh, how are you here? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I must be psychic or something because I kind of thought you were going to ask me that. And I'll get to all the details in just a moment, but... You know I'm a very courteous guy, and, and, and we have guests here. I, I really should greet everyone. Jeez, Bucky, could you eat oh. one less donut for Ow. me here? Hi, Carrie. I'm Curtis. How are you? This is a funny thing. This is called a handshake. It's a silly thing we do in society. It's just, God, I, I don't get it either. Garrison Hirsch. Do you know, do you have any idea what an incredible, incredible moment this is for me? I'm just like choked up. I, I'm getting verklempt at meeting you. I would tell you just how fascinated I am by your, by your spectacular intellect, but you know it would be kind of pointless because no one could ever be as impressed by you as you are. Who's that? And who might you be over there? I'm Billy Thomas. I'm just the cameraman. Well, Billy Thomas, just the cameraman. Come on out here. Come on out. Hang out with me a little bit here. How you doing, Billy Thomas? Well, let's get comfortable. We don't need that. Let's get comfortable here. Have a seat, Billy. Sit down. Let's have, let's have a coffee table chat. So, Billy, it's all right. It's all right. Sit down, boy. So, uh, one cameraman and three cameras for this whole little production, huh? The over-glutted cable market makes for some real low-budget work, doesn't it, Billy boy? I mean, I'll bet, I'll bet you wish you were on some really big production right now with a whole lot of people around. You'd probably feel better, wouldn't you? Hey, I got an idea. Don't answer me, Billy. Just keep staring at me like a fucking mental patient, all right? I'm talking to you, boy. Now listen to me. What's going to happen here today is very dramatic. And you better know that I am now the star. So you get your butt over there, get behind that camera, and you make sure you catch every little detail of what I do. Come on, Billy boy. Come on. Curtis. Yes, Ross? I thought you were dead. Well, you know, that's a funny thing. The, the reports of, of my de demise have been greatly exaggerated. Uh, although, I might have had a little something to do with those rumors. Shall I explain? And, and I, will, I will. Actually, just let me take care of one small business detail first. Hold on. Hi there. Prison officials, guards, people who like to come in here and just give me a beat down right now. I just want to explain to you that if you should take any action against this room, if you try to cut the electricity, if you try and cut the power to these cameras in any way, if you take an action to try and stop this show from being broadcast or at the very least caught on videotape, <laughs> I'm going to do some things in here that are going to haunt you for the rest of your fucking lives. And if you're not sure, if you think I might be bluffing, or if you're not sure whether or not to take my advice, I encourage you, why don't you ask my personal therapist what he thinks? Please do as he asks. Well, Ross, to get back to our original conversation here, um, when you first came to me with this whole little idea of, you know, cleansing myself on videotape, I kind of saw right through your plan because you don't give two shits about my eventuality. What you wanted was a case study, right? Honestly? Yes, honestly. It was a little bit of both. I thought that you opening up would be fascinating psychologically, but I sincerely thought it might be therapeutic for you. Okay, well, let me tell you. That's why I told you to fuck off. Because I'm not interested in being anybody's guinea pig. Then, then, then why did you do it? He speaks! That a boy, Bucky! 
because I realize that there's something much bigger in all this other than just me cleansing myself a little on videotape. You see, because we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a little video here today, and it's going to be a fascinating psychological piece, but it's not going to be done in quite the manner you had in mind, because now I'm going to sit in and we're going to get my take on things as well. That's going to be exciting, huh? But, but Curtis, yes. the, the video, we, we saw you cut your wrist, we, we saw you bleed to no, death. No, 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 no. You saw me cut my forehead. Once you saw that blade open up the flesh on my forehead, then even though my hands dip below the level of the cameras, your brain never once doubted the fact that I actually cut my wrist. But, but the blood. Well, the, the blood was a little trickier. The blood is a, is a I, I hope I don't embarrass you, Carrie. The blood is a carefully composed concoction of ketchup from my meals and certain bodily fluids, you know, to give it the, the proper consistency, which, which I'll grant you is disgusting, but it was pretty effective. How did you get that contraband into the room? Contraband? Oh, please. You don't, you don't know too much about prison, do you, Garrison? You should do a little prison time. You'd learn a little more. Contraband's the easiest thing in the world. I can get all the sex, drugs, and rock and roll I want in prison. That's a piece of cake. All you got to do is know and threaten the right people. What you guys are missing here, what no one thought to ask about is, did you ever consider the prison doctor that pronounced me dead? I didn't think of that. Yeah, it's a funny thing. He's a funny little Venezuelan guy. He's uh, now safely back in Venezuela. Char charming, charming dude, actually. You see, he, ha he got the impression somehow, and it's beyond me, but he thought that if he didn't do everything I said, exactly as I said, where I said to do it, then he thought that I was going to have his whole family butchered right in front of his eyes. <laughs> funny thing is, I couldn't have done it, but he couldn't afford to take the chance. Curtis, where, where have you been since yesterday? Oh, oh, the morgue. Um, it's a n nice accommodation. It's a, it's a little cool in there. But the, the whole section of this, this section of the prison is completely accessible from there. Y you know what it is? I was thinking about that. That was kind of odd. But Dr. Robbins, I think when they built the morgue, they didn't expect that the people were going to be up and about because they just kind of let us go off and do whatever we want from in there. So this afternoon, when you guys came in and built this little set, I snuck in. And I've been hiding behind the old brain here ever since. You know the authorities will be here any second. Ah! No, they won't. You see, even though it's not used anymore, this is a heavily secured safe room. And when access has been disabled from the outside, well, it's going to be at least two hours before they can get that repaired. And we're going to be done in here long before that. And you've already disabled access to this room. Well, of course, Ross. You know what a stickler I am for details. He's bluffing. There's no way he could have had enough information on how to take down the system. Wrong, dumb nuts. All the information I need is available online, if you know where to look. Just like all the info about your little TV special here and where and when it would be taped, it's all online. And you know what the really great part is? They allow me internet access as part of my recreation here at the State Fun House. There, there, there wasn't that much information online. Someone must have tipped him off about, about the black background. He must have changed into his black shirt from the white one in the video. Very astute, Dr. Numbnuts. That's excellent. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did get this black shirt from, from one of my roommates in the morgue. Actually, I just kind of took it from him. He, he, just, he just let me take it. He was kind of a pussy. Actually, I just ripped it off him. He did nothing. <laughs> but you're right. You're right. There isn't that much information, and, and how could I have known all this? Where could I have gotten all these details? Who, who, I ask you, would have tipped off a heinous individual like me? Unless it was G. Hirschfan? Wait. Your G. Hirschfan? Well, G. Hirschfan 152 at yahoo.com to be exact. Yep, that's me. You see, I needed a little more info, Doc. And I knew that if a fan was willing to slobber all over you, tell you how wonderful you were, oh, 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 oh Dr. Hirsch, what, what can you tell me about the special you're going to shoot? I'm your biggest fan. Tell me everything I need to know. I knew that your giant ego would never allow you to question the authenticity of someone like that. Didn't you ever even, ever even stop to think about the significance of the 152? No. You didn't. You're the only person on the planet arrogant enough to post your IQ on your personal web space. 
<laughs> I mean, good God, boy. I hope you don't think I picked that because there are already a 151 other G. Hirsch fans signed up because let me tell you something, in that world, I'll be glad to go ahead and die. Curtis, are you gonna kill us? Hmm, am I gonna kill you? Am I gonna kill you? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. Actually, you and Dr. Know-it-all here seem to have all the answers. You tell me. Am I gonna kill you? Curtis, you never took a life without feeling it was justified. Well, maybe my definition of justification is broadening here a little, Ross. Besides, there are, let's see, one, two, three, four of you and one of me. Take me out. No, that would give you justification. Wrong, asshole! That would give me enjoyment. Because I just hate you and people like you. You guys think you know everything and you've never experienced anything in your whole lives. You sit there on your lofty perches, dispensing half-assed guidance and second-rate advice, all the while looking down your noses at the unwashed dolts who come to you for assistance. You're no more honorable or principled than carnival psychics. Except for you, Ross. I actually think you're a decent man. I'm sorry they ever mixed you up with me. I'm not Curtis. All right, all right, enough mushy mushy. Let's get, let's get back to what we're here for. Garrison, what's your overall take on the little video we just watched? Well, it was pretty straightforward. I mean, there wasn't much room for that. Liar! You weren't having any trouble making all kinds of observations just a little while ago. Curtis, this is uncomfortable for us. Why? Why? You're these genius psychologists who have all the answers. Just use your staggering powers of mind control to defuse me. Uh, we don't try to control minds. I mean, we just try to repair them. Oh. Well, that's where you run into a little bit of a problem there, Doc. Because repairing a psyche, that's a difficult thing. Destroying one, however, that's easy. Wouldn't you agree? Answer me, numbnuts! Do you agree with me? Well, I, I suppose that would matter on how strong the person's psyche is. Hmm. Well, what about you? You pretty strong psychologically? Uh, I believe so. Don't play false modesty with me, dickweed. You think you're godlike. You think you are beyond destruction. Arrogance reeks from you. But you could be broken down, and it wouldn't even be that difficult. What do you think of that? You think you could break me down? Oh, yeah. And you called me arrogant? Garrison. No, no, actually, actually, it's OK, Ross. I'm actually glad to see little pussy here showing a little bit of testicle. You might be an interesting challenge, Doc. Carrie, however, is going to be easy. Please, I've done nothing to you. Except sit there in judgment of me and my motivations. You see, I simply don't like people like you. And I'm going to consider it an honor to make a lasting impression on you. All right, now, let's get back to what we're really here for, the little video we just watched. Garrison, what did you think of the lighting in that video? Excuse me? Was, was that difficult? Did I speak too swiftly for you? Garrison, what did you think of the lighting in my video? It may have been a bit harsh. I, I didn't really notice. Really? Um, turning that whole little monologue into a TV special was your idea, wasn't it, Garrison? Well, I mean, a lot of people thought it was a good idea. Garrison! I've been to your website. I read your crowing about this TV special that you were going to host and co-produce. It was my idea. Well, gee, Mr. Producer, do you think you made the lighting stark enough to make me look evil enough? Maybe you could have thrown in some special digital effects. You know, you could have put a pitchfork in my hand or, or maybe had a couple billion tortured souls burning in the background there. You don't think I instructed someone to make, to change the lighting to make you look evil, do you? Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Billy. Oh, Billy boy. Billy, come on over here a second, would you please? Billy, you did the lighting for me for my little monologue there, didn't you? 
Yes, I did. Answer me something now, son. Is that how you would normally light a monologue like that? Answer me, boy. And don't lie, because if you do, I'll see it and I won't be happy. No, that's not how I usually light that setting. That's interesting. So, did, did someone give you instructions to do it differently? Yes. Hmm. Who would that be, Billy? Who gave you those instructions, Billy? Dr. Hirsch. Very good, Billy. You did a fine job. Now, go back over to that camera and make sure you keep getting my good side there, okay? Go on, go on. So, Garrison, what do we think? I thought making a request to change the lighting on the video would just infuriate you. As opposed to how pleased lying to me would make me feel, huh? I apologize. You're not sorry. You just want to save your ass. The lighting was actually a stroke of genius. It added a real intensity to the piece. I can respect that. It's your cowardice I detest. Your, your cowardice Curtis. I detest to the point... Curtis, the ring. You what? Have, you have a wedding ring on. Why, yes I do, Carrie. No, no wonder you're such a respected doctor. Nothing slips by you. Well, I'm, you're married? And again, and again, she's on top of everything. Yes, a wedding ring is a symbol of matrimony. Interested in my love life, are you, Carrie? No, I'm interested in you. Oh, that's sweet. That's, that's, a, that's adorable. I, I, I'm so impressed. You want to know the story? The fact is, I love my wife more than anything in the world. The only times in life that I've even felt anywhere as close to normal is when I was around her. She's the most special person I ever met, and that's the truth. Well, maybe you're not such a monster after all. Hmm. That's an interesting assessment, particularly when you consider that I never admitted to being a monster in the first place. Well, where is your wife now? I told you. I told you. I loved her more than I ever loved anybody or anything in life. And given that, that really left me only one alternative. I killed her. You what? What? No, 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 I'm only kidding. You guys want that shit? <laughs> I'm just a funny guy. <laughs> Although, gee, maybe, maybe I'm not really funny. Maybe it's just more denial and bravado, huh, Carrie? It could be. And couldn't it also be that Maybe I just have a keen, albeit twisted, sense of humor. Isn't that possible? That's a possibility. Funny, because you didn't leave that option open at all just a little while ago, did you? Well, the situation has changed a bit since then. Oh, really? I see. Now you're just kind of hoping to stay alive, right? Yes, I am. Well, let me explain something to you, and I'll make it real easy for you. The one sure way to piss me off is to patronize me. You're much better off remaining the judgmental, arrogant bitch you truly are. Do you understand that? I don't agree with your assessment, but I do see your point. Very good. Then to answer your original question, my wife, hopefully, is now someplace safe. You see, when it became apparent to me that I was going to leave a life of incarceration, or maybe worse, well, I begged her to leave, and to her credit, she wouldn't go. It took me actually months, oh, actually years, to get her to finally move herself away from me because I didn't want her to be dragged down by the association with a scumbag like me. And I don't know where my wife is right now, but I hope she's happy because God knows she deserves it. And now, genius doctor, Please inform me as how that move was insincere and disingenuous on my part. I, I said no such thing. Oh, come on, Doc. Don't piss out on me now. I'm sure your little psychological, analytical mind there has already developed a scenario in which I couldn't possibly feel that deeply for someone. Well, it, it was a wonderful gesture. But, come on, but. You probably owner only pushed her away so she wouldn't have an opportunity to hurt you. 
Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Did you get that? Did everybody at home hear that? Wow. You are a genius, doctor. You are a genius. You nailed it. All this time. All this time. I thought I was motivated only by the deepest love I've ever known for another human being. But you've made me see the error of my ways. You're absolutely right. That was absolutely selfish on my part. It had nothing to do with love. It had nothing to do with how I cared about another human being. It was just selfishness to protect myself. And you know what? You know what? You are such a fucking genius. I'm gonna do you a favor. I'm gonna give you the opportunity to end this nightmare for all of you simply by using the powers of that keen psychological mind. Curtis, is this a genuine offer? Oh, this is the real deal, Ross. This is absolutely the real deal. I'm going to give Dr. Hirsch here the opportunity to be a hero. If your keen psychological intuition and your ability to understand a person's psychological motivations is actually keen enough. Go ahead. Oh, you're pretty confident, are you there, Bucky? When you walked in here today, did you notice a big red button on the side of the door there? Yes. Do you know what it is? It's the release button for the safe room. It's the only way to open it up from the inside. Well, very good. You're not only a brilliant scientist, you're a technical marvel as well. Either that, or you know what it could be? Maybe you just watch a lot of those late night prison movies on cable, huh? <laughs> in either case, you're absolutely right. That buzzer allows you to go from inside to outside. Now here's the kicker. That button is on a totally separate system than anything that allows you to come from the outside in. So what I'm saying is, for that button to be disabled, I would have had to take a totally separate action. So, my question to you, Garrison, did I disable that button? Why wouldn't you have disabled it? For the sake of this game, my amusement. I'm having a good time here. You know what? Let's give it a try. Everybody, everybody gather around here. Come here. Carrie, Carrie, come on. Doctor, Dr. Ross, buddy. Come on, over here. O over here. Come on, Carrie, come on. Come on. Don't leave. Come get you. Billy boy, Billy boy, I need you over here too. Come on, Billy. Everybody, line up right here. And whatever you do, don't move. Because it would be a really bad thing if you do. Now, Garrison, my pal, would you say that I'm probably correct in my assumption that right on the other side of that door, there's a whole bunch of prison guards just chomping at the bit for the opportunity to come in here and take me down? I would think so. I would hope so. Oh, really? Well, see, in just a moment here, I'm going to give you the opportunity to walk over there, tap that buzzer, and allow those prison guards to come in here and have their way with me. But, and here's the catch, if you walk over there to push that buzzer and I have disabled it, <laughs> I'm going to physically abuse you in ways unseen since deliverance. Now what about it, Super Psych? You think you're up to the challenge? This is insane. It is an opportunity to escape the most potentially dangerous, deadly situation you're ever going to encounter. And all that's left now is to find out if you're a sharp enough psychologist to pull it off. I'm going to sit right here, Garrison. I'm going to sit right here. You stand over there, the other side of this table. I'm going to sit my ass right here, faced away. From this position, there's no possible way I can stop you from running through that curtain and pushing that buzzer if you'd like to open that door. You got to the count of five to figure me out psychologically, figure out the workings of my mind and understand whether or not I'd leave that buzzer enabled. It's an interesting game. Are, are y'all having fun? OK, Garrison, we got till five. One. What are you thinking, big boy? Come on, get over there and get it. Two. Oh, come on, don't you want to leave? I, I don't know what he's been doing. Three. Garrison, are you having so much Ross, fun? Ross, you, you gotta tell to go me push something. The buzzer? Here. <laughs> Four. Oh, time's running short. The guards are chomping at the bit. They want to come in, Garrison. Go let them in. Five. <laughs> Oh, gee, I'm sorry. You lost our game today. All right, everybody back to your positions. Go ahead, have a seat, have a seat. All right, Billy, go man your cameras. I might say something else smart. I want to make sure that you got me on tape doing it. Oh, what a shame. Now, Garrison, 
You got to inform me. You got to let me know. What was it? What was it in your keen psychological mind that told you that that door was disabled? If I had moved, it would have given you justification to try to kill me. Wrong asshole! Shh. Your diagnosis is superficial. Bullshit! I had plenty enough justification to kill you from the time I walked in here. Just your fucking arrogant attitude and, and your holier-than-thou being, I would have never felt an ounce of remorse for taking your life. What did Ross tell you I am fond of? Um, uh, think! Think, uh, retard, think! What did he tell you I am fond of? Uh, irony. Very good, Dickweed. You were listening. Now, answer me this. What would be more ironic than having given you the opportunity to end this torture for all of you, only to have you cower away from it, and then later find out that that door was indeed accessible? I, I don't think that door will open. You wouldn't take the chance of us getting out of here. There was. No chance of you getting out of here. You are so weak in spirit and ability, you would never understand the real complexities of a true psychological evaluation. You see, Garrison, if that button is enabled, if you can push that red button and that door opens, everything you've ever done in life, your education, your writings, your work, is a farce. I know that door is locked. Oh, you do know that door is locked, huh? Well, let me tell you something, pal. Maybe if I just kill Curtis, you right now, uh, neither Curtis, one of us will ever have to worry about who's right and who's wrong. Don't. don't. Please, don't hurt him. Why uh, not? Because it, it, this uh, isn't accomplishing anything. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, It'll accomplish something. It would great, give me a great feeling of satisfaction. But your little idea here of getting through my aggression in a different way that's a stroke of genius. I don't understand. Sure you do. Your soft, gentle touch on me there. You know, your, your soft tone. You're absolutely right. What would make everything better for me in life at this point is to get laid. You're mocking me. Gee. No, do you think? Maybe I'm a little irritated by the fact that you think that I am so simple that the soft, Touch of a woman's hand, her close presence, will make me forget everything else in life. Get, get his dick hard. That'll send all the blood down there. That way, it'll leave his brain completely defenseless. That's the best you got? No, it was the opposite, Curtis. I think you're extremely smart, so I thought we could work this out in a verbal manner. Oh, no, 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 no. Trust me, I've tried that. It's way too slow and boring. Intense physical violence? Ha, <laughs> that's a cure-all for everything. But, seeing as how you offered, come on, baby, take off your top. Please, stop. No, come on, it'll, it'll be fine. I, 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 Curtis, don't. Don't I do this. I call what you meant. Please, don't oh, do this. No, come on. Now, you want it, honey. You know Stop. that. Ross, oh, do don't, something. Don't worry. It's, it's not going to last all that long. Curtis. I haven't had a woman in a very long time. Curtis. May I help you, Ross? Please don't do this. All right. I'll let little Carrie keep her clothes on. But you want to know why? Why? Because I think it's really hysterical that when I was threatening to kill Dr. Dipshit, you said absolutely nothing. <laughs> but you notice, as soon as she was in a little bit of danger, he spoke right up. It's obvious how everybody feels about you, Dr. Numbnuts. <laughs> Besides, simple physical scars are not the type of abuse I plan on leaving on a little carry over there. What do you mean by that? Oh, state your real question, Garrison. You don't give two shits about Carrie. What you want to know is, what type of scars do I have lined up for you? <laughs> I'm having fun. Hey, you know what? I haven't talked to my buddy Billy in a while. Billy, come on out here, pal. How you doing, buddy? So, Billy, uh, how old are you, anyway? 22. Yeah? You like your job, this cameraman gig you got here? It's all right sometimes. You're not, like, really enthusiastic, are you, Billy? This, uh, being a cameraman on kind of a second-rate cable TV show, that get you out of pussy, Billy? Not really, no. What about fame? You think fame attracts a lot of women, Billy? Of course. Well, then, I got something for you. Keep going. 
There you go, Billy. Bam, this is what it's all about. This is your opportunity, Billy. I'm gonna give you the chance to be a hero, to be a legend. Gee, Curtis, thanks. That's really great of you. See, I'll fill in the mute sessions you got going here. I'll, I'll fill in that space for you, Billy. You see, Billy, this video is gonna be seen all over the world. And the whole world loves a hero. A David who takes down Goliath. You heard of those guys, right? Uh, Curtis, this is just a small cable production. It was a small production, you tool. With what's gonna happen here today, in this day and age of internet video, and big money for ghastly occurrences on video, it's gonna be seen all over the world. Oh, what's he doing? and just so you know, if you ever interrupt me again, I will rip out your larynx. Got that? Now, Billy boy, as I was saying before, we were so rudely interrupted there. Why don't you become a hero, Billy? Be a man. Be the man. All you got to do is take me out. I mean, look at you. You're, you're a young man. You're in good shape. I'm kind of old and beat up. I've been around a long time. You can kick my ass. Do it, Billy. Be the hero. I mean, when this is all said and done, you're going to write a book about this whole experience. And it'll probably become a bestseller and then later maybe even a made-for-cable TV movie. What's the title of the book going to be, Billy? The Hero? Or How I Cowered in the Corner Like a Little Pussy When My Opportunity Came Up? Write the book, Billy. I can't. That's a shame. That's a damn dirty shame. I thought there was something inside you, boy, but I was wrong. Slink back on over to your cameras. Get ready for your, your real mediocre life. You see, you're going to get married, then divorced. All the while, you'll, you'll grow yourself a nice little beer belly, and as that stomach gets bigger, your zen for life will evaporate. You'll have a couple of kids. They'll probably be gutless failures just like you. And then you'll go to your grave, not only not having ever made a mark in life, but not having even created a dimple. Go back to your camera, Billy. It's safe there. I want you to go over to that camera, pick it up, and follow me around with it. Because there's some real huge drama coming here soon, and I want to make sure and get every little piece of it. And you like the safety of being behind that camera. Go get it, Billy. What a shame. What a shame. Well, so what are we, what are we gonna do now? I, we, we gotta do, I got a great idea. I, I, got, a, I got an awesome idea. Hey, Billy, Billy, uh, reality TV, that's really popular right now, isn't it? Yes. We're gonna play a reality game. What? It's yes, Ross? What kind of game did you have in mind? I'm glad you asked me that, Ross. Good question. It's called Truth or Death. It's a lot like Truth or Dare, except in my game, I ask you guys a question, and if I think you're lying, I kill you. You must, should... you must be kidding. No, no, Russ, this is, you gotta admit this is gonna be must-see TV. It's gonna be the greatest thing ever. Curtis, please. No, I... Ross, Ross, listen, listen. Okay, I'll be fair. Okay, I'll be fair. We'll play for a little while. After a couple people die, if we don't like the way the show's turning out, we'll cancel it, okay? So if you think we're lying, you'll kill one of us. So what happens if we tell the truth? <laughs> you don't get killed. <laughs> what part of this really simple game is hard for you to understand, Garrison? <laughs> All right, let's play. Come on, we're going to have a good time. Billy! Billy, I, I think you should be our first contestant on Truth or Dare. I don't want to play. I don't care if you want to play, Billy. That's not what I asked you. Come on out here. Garrison, better yet. Garrison, come here. Go take that camera from that young boy. Make sure you get this whole game on tape, because I'm going to really be pissed off if you don't. Get the camera from him. Come on, Billy. You can be our very first contestant on Truth or Death. Okay, Billy, come on over here now. Now play right to this camera here. All right, now, now you're the first contestant. Don't be nervous. Your question, which I might remind you could lead to some unpleasantries should you decide to be deceitful, is very simple. Do you like me, Billy? No. Well, geez. I'm hurt. You hurt my feelings, Billy. How come you don't like me? Because, man, 
You're a psycho bully. You're not doing this for anybody else. You're doing this to get off on your own demented kicks. Billy, Billy, easy. It's, easy. A, it's all right, Ross. It's all right. He's playing the game by the rules. Well, you know what, buddy? I may disagree with your assessment that I'm doing this for my own demented kicks, although I am having a good time. But I do think you're being honest, so you don't have to pay the consequences. But actually, wait a second. Before you go, Billy, you think I'm a bully, huh? Yeah, I do. Did your daddy ever give you any sage advice about what to do with Billy, bullies, Billy? I don't know. Yeah, he did. He told you, a bully's really a coward at heart. All you gotta do is stand up to a bully and he'll back right down because bullies really have no heart inside. Something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, I guess. Well, do it, Billy. Stand up to the bully. Kick my ass. Make me back down. Or was your daddy just full of shit like you are? Go get the camera back from Garrison, Billy. Go. Oh, son, you're such a disappointment to me. Okay. Get me back on camera here, Billy. Sit down, donut boy. Come on. We, we gotta shoot. We got pacing, pacing, pacing. Come on. All right. We're gonna continue our little game here. Carrie, you can be the next contestant on Truth or Death. Step right up here. Step right up into my little studio here, Carrie. It's all right. It's all right. Come on right over. It's reality TV. Everybody likes to be on reality TV. All right, now, now let's do this up properly there, Carrie. Hi, and welcome to our show. This episode of Truth or Death stars Carrie Robbins, a respected doctor. Now, Carrie, your question, which I should remind you could lead to some real unpleasantries should you decide to be deceitful towards me, is then also a very simple one. Anybody can play this game. It's easy. Your question is, when I was uh, taking off your clothes over there a little while ago, were you just a little bit turned on? I mean, come on, come on, think about it. Here, here you are, this, this little prissy girl, growing up with a silver spoon, and then later only the finest blue blood penises in your mouth. You must be turned on a little bit by the thought of a bad boy, huh, Carrie? I mean, come on, baby, who could be a badder boy than me? What do you want me to say here? What, what is it about you eggheads? What is it about you eggheads that this game is so difficult? Were you just a little bit turned on when I was touching you a little while ago. Maybe a little. Unbelievable. Un-fucking believable! You what? You were turned on? There's a real good chance here that I might kill you. I was at least threatening to rape you, and now you're telling me you were a little turned on by it? I'm confused. I'm frightened. What do you want me to say? What I want from you is something I haven't been able to extract from you or this idiot over here all night. A little honesty. I just want you to tell the fucking truth. That's what I want. That's all I've been asking for. And instead of giving me that, you try and read what you think that I want to hear. I don't want you to read. I want you to tell me the truth. You and this idiot over here can't seem to understand that. And the game is truth or death. Do we get to ask you a question? What's that, numb nuts? When do we get to ask you a question? Well, Garrison, seeing as how this is my show, and I'm the host, but you have to always be the center of attention, you can ask me your little question. Go ahead, give it to me, genius. If you could live your life over, would you do everything the same again? Sit down. All right, all right, you pissed me off, but all right, that's a fair question. And you guys can probably imagine, I thought a lot about that lately. And you know what the truth is? The scary truth is, probably I wouldn't change a thing because I did the best I could with what I had. I'm not crazy about where I am right now, but it was all I had to work with. Everything I did, everything I've ever done I feel was justified. So to be perfectly honest with you, if I had it to do all over again, I wouldn't do anything differently, and I'd be still right back here in the same shithole I'm in right now. Well, at least you're being honest and sincere for once. No, I'm not, you retard. <laughs> I made that shit up, you moron. Numb nuts, 
They're gonna put me in the gas chamber. Of course I do things differently. I would take drugs, I would get a lobotomy, I, I would sing hallelujah in the choir if it would change my eventuality. Of course I would do things differently. I just made that shit up to see if you were stupid enough to believe it. If you hate lying so much, then why did you do it? Because the game is truth or death. I was interested in finding out who's gonna step up and take care of business when I lied. You guys want to hear a funny story? When I was a, a, a little kid, my mom took me to see Bambi. Great family movie, right, Bambi? So you know that scene, you know that scene where, where Bambi's mom gets shot? All the, all the little kids in the theater, they're crying and screaming, and, and the mothers, most of them were crying too. There was like a river of tears in the theater. You know what I said? You know what the only thing I could think of to say was? I looked up at my mom. I said, oh, cool. I hope he shoots that stupid thumper rabbit next. Is that for real, Curtis, or are you just putting us on again? No, Ross. Unfortunately, that's the real deal. I never went out looking for violence or looking for violent confrontation. It's just sometimes it happens. And then, with that lack of death reverence inside of me, that just seemed like a justifiable means to an end. So you're telling us basically you're facing the gas chamber because you're a harsh disciplinarian? <laughs> I never really thought of it that way before. But yeah, I guess that's the case. I never, I never treated anybody with disrespect. And when I wasn't afforded that same courtesy, sometimes I took actions that other people might seem as a little harsh. Which is why when people like us analyze you and offer theories as to why you are who you are, you get angry. Well, people like these two tools right here, but yeah, that's why. So you're telling me that basically your lack of respect for human life is a genetic mutation and not the result of a warped mind? Actually, that's exactly what I'm telling you, Dr. Robbins, but I'm quite sure you know differently. No, Curtis, I never thought of it, but it's certainly a possibility. She's patronizing you. Excuse me? You don't believe any of this. You're just trying to defuse him. Garrison, this isn't the time for this debate. Sure it is. He's trying to take the high road on everything, and she's letting her fear feed into it. Look, I don't need or want your analysis of my motives. Thank you. He doesn't have a choice. What's that supposed to mean? Your arrogance is the most powerful force in your being. It overrides every basic instinct you have, even that for survival. You have to be right. I don't have to be right. I am right. What the hell are you doing? Yeah, Dr. Dipshit. Oh what are you doing? Be What's your angle here? Giving you a little bit of backbone. Because if you kill me, this whole little story about something missing in your head, that's all bullshit. If you do kill me, everything I say is right. And you know it. Fuck, you're right. Unfortunately, you are absolutely wrong about how much I Curtis. care about that. Uh, Curtis. It's time, Doc. Oh, it's Curtis. Curtis, it's Curtis, please don't. Uh, how you feeling, Doc? Oh, Curtis. Can you feel satisfied enough to Curtis. move on to the next step? Do something. Uh, Do you, Doc? Uh, Do you? Uh, Do you want to live? Uh, Do you want to live, Doc? Curtis, please. Do fucking Curtis. Bad. Don't do Doc. this. Doc, don't Curtis. worry. I'm going to have him put it on your tombstone. Uh, he was right. Uh, Curtis. Do Curtis, you Curtis, you, you believe in God. Why, yes, I do, Ross. But you pick a hell of a time for a theology discussion. Don't you think God would judge you more favorably if, if everything you've done in your heart you believe was justified? Shit. <laughs> Shit! Sit down, Carrie. Back in the chair. Sit down, shitbag. You're still alive, but you are my bitch. Do you understand me? 
<laughs> Say it! Tell me you're my bitch! I'm her bitch. And you really like it in the ass, don't you? Bastard. I want you to remember this moment, Garrison. I want you to keep this very moment in your mind. And then someday, when you've lured some innocent young girl into Ugh. your bed, you know, a woman with limited enough life experience that she bleeds you in her mind's a bullshit. And maybe at that magic moment, you'll think back to this time right now and how totally fucking emasculated you are. And that tiny little penis of yours, it'll shrivel right up into a wet noodle. And you know where that'll leave her, Garrison? That'll leave her to go get banged by some big stud football player. The same guys that tortured you all through your adolescence. That's a nice future you got there, genius. What the fuck? Now, Garrison, facing your own brutal demise causes you to lose control a little bit there? <laughs> I mean, dude, in my video I said I was gonna piss myself, but I just did it for dramatic effect. That shit right there is just fucking disgusting. <laughs> All right, we gotta have something big here. We, we've got ratings to think about. We, we gotta come up with a, a big finish. Oh, something. <laughs> come on, guys, help me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Night, Billy. Oh. Well, you know what? Good for him. He took his shot. My God, you killed him. Oh, you stop your whining. I didn't kill him. Sit down. Sit down. He's fine. He's got a, a busted nose. Concussion. Possible skull fracture, but... He's gonna live. Why did you have to do Shut that? up! You shut the fuck up. I gotta ask you something. Why, why didn't you help him? When he called you for help, how come you couldn't help him? Well, it, it was a sucker move. He played right into your hands. <laughs> so what you're telling me is, your refusal to help him was a calculated move. It's the only way we're going to survive this. <laughs> what about you, Ross? How come you didn't help out our young hero there? The, the truth? Yes, I would love the truth. I froze. I should have helped him. I should have done anything I could to stop you and put an end to this, but... I was scared and... I didn't do anything. And I'm ashamed of myself. Did you get that, Numb Nuts? Oh. You probably aren't familiar with it. You've never known it yourself. It's called the truth. You're never gonna know the truth, are you? Because your head is buried so far up your own ass, you can't even see your own shortcomings. You turn everything that's a negative about you into a positive, just to feed your giant ego. Just like, just like the button on the door. You didn't try and unlock that door because you're a chicken shit. I didn't not because some si don't interrupt me. You did not go for that lock on that door because you're a coward. Not because some psycho and that analytical bullshit told you that it's secure. I didn't try it because I know it's locked. Is that so? Well, you know what? We're short one camera operator now. So you got a new job, Garrison. <laughs> Get over there, pick up that camera, and follow me around with it. And you better get good shots, and they better be on my good side. Because if anything goes wrong from here on out, it's going to be a bad day for you. Go over there, pick up that camera, and follow me around with it. we got some big drama unfolding here real soon. Go. Oh, and Garrison, one more thing. I have heard way more than enough from you. If you speak, if you utter a sound, if you fart, everything else be damned, I will kill you. Do you understand that? Yeah. Pick up the camera. That's a good little bitch. Well, folks, it's been fun. 
It's been informative, but it's time to wrap things up. Curtis, think... Curtis, there's one thing about all this I don't understand. Really, Ross? Just one? Well, one that's bothering me right now. Uh, why Billy? He didn't judge you. He didn't wrong you in any way. What, you... You think I did that to punish him? You don't? Absolutely not, Ross. I just did that boy the biggest favor he's ever going to get in his life. You're being sarcastic, aren't you? No, not at all. Not at all. He just faced down fear. He looked fear right in the eyes, and he stood up to it. When he faced up against me, against all odds, he changed the course of his life. You see, that boy right there is going to be a success now because of what happened here today. Because a man that knows no fear knows no limits. You see, he looked inside himself today, and what he found was all heart. This right of passage. Absolutely. Right to the gates of hell. Wait, but you pummeled him. It is of absolutely no significance or consequence that he lost the fight. His eternal legacy is he refused to back down from it. Are you saying that you did this for his benefit? Yeah, well, see, how do your psychology books say it? Tough love, right? Well, to the extreme. Well, I'm an extreme kind of guy. But you know what? It's time to wrap things up here. Hi there. Prison officials, guards, people that want to do me grievous bodily harm. I have a request for you. And you had better, better honor it. Right behind the little brain there is a slide drawer. I want you to put one pistol and one bullet into that slide drawer and send it in to me. If you should decide not to honor my request, well, remember earlier how I mentioned things were going to happen in here that would haunt you for the rest of your lives? They'll seem like a day in the park as opposed to what I'm going to do right now. And once more, if you're not sure, you're thinking, uh, maybe we'll give you a gun, maybe we won't. If you're not sure what to do, please ask my therapist. He's already in control here. Please don't infuriate him. Just do what he asks. Well, I guess we got nothing to do but sit and wait. But you know, you know what the most ironic part of this whole thing is? What's that? When you came to me, you know, with this whole idea for the making the little video there, I only did it because I had this in mind, you know, the, the fun we were going to have here today. But you know, when I was done making that monologue, I actually felt better. I mean, I actually did feel like something had been lifted off my shoulders, like, like my conscience had been cleaned. So, that ended up being a pretty good thing, and I have you to thank for it, Ross. You're welcome. Now you can make it up to me by calling this whole thing off. Oh, no, 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 no. I, could, I couldn't do that. I mean, I've got a viewing audience who I promised a big finish to. I mean, TV's all about ratings, right? Please, please, we have families, people who care about us. People who will gather themselves together and go on with life. Newsflash, Dr. Robbins, everybody dies. We're all just specks of matter. See, that's, that's, that's one of the big differences between you and me. I am keenly aware of my cosmic insignificance while you think you matter. Are you telling me that we're just expendable? That's exactly what I'm telling you. Oh, good. I think my package has arrived. Oh, this is a nice one. Wow. Those guys really came through for us. Let's see if I remember how to load one of these. I'd hate to have it misfire or something. This, this could be, let's see, this. Curtis, don't. What is that? I'm just, just getting excited in. I haven't done this in a while. Ross, you're a, you're a little closer. No, we all know what I really want to do with this. <laughs> Say goodnight, Garrison. I wonder if I can take your eye out right through that camera. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really not my style, you guys. You know, after all this, just to go ahead and shoot y'all? No, I, I think it's time, though. I think, what do you say? Here it comes. <laughs>
This is what I promised you. I promised you a big finish. This is it. This is One Last Kill. Isn't that what Garrison said the name of this show is? You want to see One Last Kill? Is this what you paid for? Is this the price of admission? Is this the video that's going to make it all over the world? Watch my gray matter. A little bit there, Carrie. It tends to stain. <laughs> Here we go. Good night. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> I'm such a funny guy, especially when I have a prop. I'm like a prop comic. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up. Oh, well. You know what? Well, hold on a second. I, I have some thoughts here. This, this will be okay right there. Actually, one thing first. Ross, you've always treated me with total respect. And I think you did your best to try and help me, and I appreciate it. I just wish I could have been more successful. You did fine. Oh my god! Pick up the gun. Pick up the gun, Carrie. Pick it up, or I'll kill him. Pick up the gun. Stand up. Stand up! Point it at me! Point it at me! Point it at my chest! Shoot me! Point that fucking gun at me. It's your decision, Carrie. You kill me or I kill him. You make the choice. <laughs> Good thing things like this never happen in real life. Isn't it, Carrie? Isn't it? Point that gun at me. Put that gun at me. Either he dies or I die. Somebody's gonna die here today. What's it gonna be, Carrie? You make the call. Shoot me and it better be a good one. You better put it in my head or in my chest. Cause if you only wound me, I'm gonna kill every one of you motherfuckers in this room. <laughs> Carrie, he's slipping away. I felt it before. I know what that feels like. Oh, really? Oh, really? Go ahead! Blow your fucking brains out! I don't care! I still win! You can't be me! You can only kill me! <laughs> He's got a wife and two beautiful little girls. Are you gonna kill their daddy, Carrie? Are you? Shoot me! Shoot, shoot me, you fucking cunt! Shoot me!
Thank you.